My name is Antoine Coad. I've been working as gaming application engineer for three years now. Um, so my job is on a daily basis is to work with game developers in order to improve the quality of their games and make them run uh, better on Intel hardware. And I'm here today to talk uh, about a topic I've been looking into actually since before I started working at Intel. Uh, I've always been really interested in two-power optimization. Actually, since 2006, I had bought one of these brand new laptops with a Core 2 Duo NVIDIA graphics. It was one of the first ones that was claiming 8 to 10 hours battery life. And so I showed up at university first days of class, and I was like, awesome, I'm going to be able to play video games the whole day during my classes. And that sounds like a great plan. And I was really disappointed when after two hours, of playing Age of Empire 2, my um, laptop just ran out of battery. And since then, every year, you see great laptops that claims 8 to 10 hours battery life. And when you end up playing with them, well, battery life ends up being at two hours. And this became even more important in the mobile world, where actually people do always play on battery, and games always suck the battery life. And looking a little bit into it, I realized that you can make the hardware as good as you want. If the software is not optimized to run best on that hardware, well, battery life is just going to go as fast as possible. So today I'm going to talk about power optimization, and I'm going to talk about the work I've been doing with um, Funcom. I don't know if you know them. It's a studio based in, uh, in Oslo, in Norway. Uh, the work we've been doing on LEGO in order to optimize for their games for, pow for power optimization and how we saved up to 80% of battery life uh, by doing this. So the agenda for today, why power matters, uh, why you as a developer should be considering looking to power optimization. Then we're going to look how power works on system nowadays. We're going to see how you guys can actually optimize your game. And then you, I'm going to show you what we've been actually doing with LEGO so that to get such great results. All right, off to the first topic. So. Why power matters? Um, when I was putting that talk together, I just spent a couple of uh, hours on the uh, Google Play Store, and I got that kind of testimonials. I'm pretty sure you as developers don't really want to have that kind of comments in your um, game. Raise your hand if I'm wrong. But um, what I want to share here is that users are becoming power aware. They want to be able to play their games for a whole day, whether it's on their laptop or on their mobile phones when they are in the public transport, etc., etc. So users are becoming power aware, and they are starting to realize that it's not only on the hardware side, but also on the software side that you can achieve great power saving. Second point here, it's um, a bit more technical. So it's basically for um, what you need to know is that devices have a power envelope, which is now on integrated graphics, which is the case of all of the mobile devices and most of the laptops, um, is shared between the CPU and the GPU, which means that basically there is only um, some power that can be allocated in total. Which means that even if you think that your um, game is limited by the GPU, Optimizing for the CPU can uh, bring you some great power saving. So in order to, to prove that, I, I created a small uh, synthetic workload, which is basically rendering fractal. So it's 100% limited by the GPU. And then I was running some um, heavy kernels, uh, just um, calculating uh, pi decimals on the CPU. So non graphics related at all. And this is the results uh, I've been able to see. So on the red line is a traditional desktop system uh, with um, discrete graphics. And as you can see, the CPU work doesn't impact at all the, the performance. And this is what happens on every um, integrated graphics system, whether it's laptop or um, mobile. It's basically the more CPU thread you're running on the CPU, the more the CPU is going to need power to run those threads. And the more it's going to take power away from the GPU, slowing down the performance of the application. And you can actually see that nowadays on, on games. And for instance, like the audio processing system, et cetera, et cetera. 
that are running on the CPU can impact the performance of your game. And the last one here for, uh, is that the devices have varying power behavior, which means that you cannot actually um, control uh, exactly what's going on. OEMs have a lot of power. They can decide, let's say, oh, the system has less than 50% battery life. Let's limit the power available so that we can last longer on battery. But limiting the power is going to limit the frequency you can go to and throttle the performance of your game. So here, the point is that if your game is power optimized, basically, it's going to use only 10 watts. So whether or not you have 10 or 15 watts available, your game is still going to run great. On the other hand, if your game was using the whole 14 watts in order to run at the decent performance, going down to 10 watts and having only 10 watts to run your game, you're probably going to have a really end up with a really laggy um, result. So, exploring power efficiency, I try to put it everything in a nutshell. Um, I've spent hours trying to understand everything that's going on in the hardware, and it's still not clear. But basically, what's happened is that what you need to know is that SOC components, every component in your system have states and um, sleep states. And basically, they have either um, awake and then consuming some power, or they are, as soon as they go idle, they are going into sleep states, consuming less and less power. And it's the same thing. When active, they also have performance states. So when they're uh, awake or active, the more um, performance your system needs, the more it's going to go into higher states. And so if you want to save power, the only way is just to do the same work or less work um, more efficiently in order to send your system to sleep. Because it, essentially, when your system is going to go to sleep, it is um, going to save power. And maybe the most important point is that the package C state is determined by the higher of the cores. Which means, like, let's say you have um, like two cores plus the graphics um, running at the same time, let's say, to, to compute your game. If any of the component is active, it's going to prevent your system from going to sleep. And preventing that system from going to sleep is going to prevent um, your system from saving any power. So the important point here is that you need to pay attention to every single detail. Even if you think your game is running just fine, it might be worse just having a look at the other components and see how they're actually performing, and if they're not just wasting power um, for unknown reasons. So. I tried to put like a couple of uh, best practices for you guys, like simple stuff that you can do in your games if you want to uh, save power. So rule number one, and it's for every single game on every single platform, it's to adapt to your platform. There are like gazillions number of platforms, different CPUs, different graphics, different memory speeds, different power available, et cetera, et cetera. And all of those factors are impacting the performance of your game. So if you want to have your game really optimized and really running great on like all of those platforms, what you need to do is at runtime, when you first time start the game or when you first download and install the game, just scan the hardware that's available on the system and just set the settings or the performance of the game so that it's actually number one going to run on that platform because that's really something horrible when you download the game and you start it for the first time, it's running at 2 FPS, and you need to go into the settings to change so that it um, actually is playable. Um, so you can do that. Detect, um, basically just run some short game snippet at runtime when you start the game for the first time, and detect the performance of the system, and then set the system, let's say, to a lower um, <coughs> resolution or a visual quality settings. So best practice number two, and it's also the easiest, is to cap the frame rate. So it's something really easy to do, and it's something really important. Because essentially, as I told you earlier, if you want to save power, you need to do less work. Well, capping the frame rate from 60 to 30 FPS, essentially, you're doing twice less work. 
And <clears throat> this is why it's like the most, the most efficient way to save power. It's also fairly easy. Well, with both DirectX and OpenGL, yes, for, so for Windows or Android, it's literally one line of code um, that you can add into your code. And for those of you using Unity, there's also, actually, I think it's just one checkbox on Unity where you can do that and actually save, as you can see, a lot, a lot of power. So this is like some um, results I've been measuring um, on a atom processor of power saving from going to uncapped frame rate to capping the frame rate at 30 FPS. And as you can see, for s in some cases, you get up to 80% battery life simply by <coughs> capping the frame rate. And something you can do is that, for instance, for static scenes or menu, etc., is not only cap the frame rate at 30 FPS, but cap it even lower. So let's say like cap at 10 FPS, and when the user is actually touching the screen, um, it's just go to the main menu and raise the frame rate again so that it, is, it seems to be um, at a higher frame rate. Uh, <coughs> frame rate. As I said, um, if you want to save power, you need to do less work. So essentially, um, resolution is a good way of doing it. As you can see, there was some measurements done uh, two years ago already on a um, desktop system. And it's the energy that's required to render each frame. And as you can see, when going to 800 by 600 from six to 16 by 9, essentially, you're going to double your power consumption. So I'm not telling you to run all of the games at 800 by 600. But the important point here is to actually find the right resolutions, which allows you to balance power efficiency, performance, and, uh, and visual quality. Um, one of the ways of doing that is render, for instance, at the lower resolution and upscale as a post-processing effect, just to be able to have um, the right amount of power saving with um, the right visual quality. So if computing data is taking power, moving data around is also um, taking quite a lot of power. And that's something usually people um, don't talk much about. Um, it's the, the bandwidth. So especially in the mobile world, where you usually now go to crazy high resolution, like 2K, 4K, etc., tablets. Um, well, if you want to render once um, a 2K frame buffer at 60 FPS, you're going to need one gigabyte, per, one gigabyte per second. And um, the, the bandwidth is actually, especially on systems consuming really low power, um, have a quite significant impact. So um, this is like a, an algorithm called HDR. And basically, I was trying to show how much power does the memory dim consume in function of the bandwidth. And you can see it's a linear, <coughs> it's a, it's a linear relation. And so you're going to tell me, all right, half a watt, 80, um, um, 0 0.8 watt is not much for um, as power consumption for a desktop system that consumes 100 watt. But for some tablets that actually consume like 2 or 3 watts on the CPU side, it's actually quite impactful. And basically, picking up the right format uh, for the frame buffer or the right algorithm can just help in that additional 15 to 20% power um, that is going to make your customer um, happy. Be careful of spin loops. Uh, so spin loops, we've all used them. Uh, we've all learned that at uh, university or wherever we've learned how to code. Uh, and it's actually quite hard to forget how to use them, because they are everywhere. They're used to reduce the input latency. They're used for thread pools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they are really, really bad, because essentially what they're doing is that instead of sending your uh, CPU to sleep, Basically, what's happening is that they're just like keeping it awake without computing anything, just preventing it from saving power. So there are most of the time now there are ways to avoid that. You can use interruptions. Um, you can use uh, the pause instruction if necessary. If you really need to use them, the pause instruction, and you probably get access to the slides afterwards. I I pasted them um, 
a page that was that's showing how to use that instruction, which basically, even if you use the spin loops, it's hinting your CPU, oh, it's time to sleep now. Uh, this is just a spin loop. You can, um, you can go to sleep and save power. There are literally a lot you can do, and it's in general, power optimization is performance optimization. So if you've been doing performance optimization, you're already um, familiar with uh, those concepts. But <coughs> there are additional ones. So for people actually developing for Windows, handle the loss of focus. Did you guys know that when you are tabbing your game, it's actually keeping on rendering it the whole time, even though it's just a vignette in, the, in your uh, taskbar? So you can actually detect how when, the, when the, your game is not active and stop rendering at that time, put it into pose, and avoid just rendering for something that nobody is looking at. Um, color buffer clears. So when I learn graphics, I've been told, oh, clears are coming for free, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's actually not the case. Basically, on uh, traditional hardware, uh, unoptimized clears consist in filling the frame buffer each pixel by each pixel, one by one. And especially on really, um, like on not so powerful mobile hardware, that can take up to one millisecond. Out of, well, 16 milliseconds, if you want to run at 60, F at 60 FPS, that's actually quite a lot. So they are optimized clears, of course, in the hardware, but those are not only, uh, always available. So if you want to your clears to be efficient, um, just uh, use either the black color or the white color. Those are optimized in hardware, and those are actually in, um, instantaneous instead of taking a couple of milliseconds uh, wasted. Um, 2D games optimization using depth. So that's something 2D game developer usually don't really look at, the depth buffer, et cetera. It's like, oh, why do I need depth? I'm actually not um, using any depth. I'm actually creating a, a, a 2D game. And um, basically what you can do is using the depth buffer as a mask in order to re-render, in order not to have to re-render everything at the same time. So let's take a simple example. We've all seen Candy Crush. So typically, you have the candies in the middle that are changing every frame. But everything that's around, the whole, like, doesn't need to be re-rendered every frame. So what you can do is basically only uh, re-render the middle part of, the, of your screen and leave the rest as it is so that you actually are saving power and um, performance by only rendering the part of the scene that needs to be re-rendered. Reducing CPU activity, as I said, if you want to save power, you need to have all of the parts of your um, game that are uh, optimized. And I've seen, like, I've been working now for three years with game developers. I've seen great stuff done on the CPU. I've seen people using ray tracing in order to simulate the echo in a tunnel. That's great, but I'm not sh quite sure that on um, one of those mobile devices you hear the difference between ray tracing sounds or not. And actually, removing that from the game was helping us gaining roughly two to three milliseconds of um, rendering. So essentially, um, a couple FPS from just removing ray trace um, sound system. Um, Use of the next generation APIs. Well, we've all followed the um, we've all followed the news uh, this year. DX12 uh, is there, and it's coming. Vulcan. Um, is coming as well. And essentially what those APIs do is that they allow you more control. So you have less overhead on the CPU so you can do more efficient um, graphics. So that's basically the most common optimization that everybody can do on their own, on their own games in order to save power. So a bit about Funcom. Um, so it's an Oslo-based studio, as I said earlier. Um, there are two big games uh, before LEGO, Age of Conan and The Secret World, that were actually um, de designed for major audience, only for hardcore PC gamer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they wanted to have like big and like uh, terrific graphics effect, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they never really targeted mobile, and it's the first thing they did with um, LEGO, because LEGO has a different audience; it's targeted for kids. So they had to. Um, have a game that's actually ran, uh, 
can be played on every single device kids are playing on, which is nowadays like mobile, um, so laptops, tablets, phones, etc. Whatever is computing, they want to be able to play their games on. So they started from a brand new uh, engine, and they and they just had it optimized as much as they can. But they also wanted to have really high-end features. So what they did is they did an engine that's actually scaling tremendously well from you can get awesome visual quality and play on your desktop with great visual effect, and you can also get um, mobile performance and lots of power saving. So this is a list of the features they've been implementing. So as you can see, it's actually not much, and it was um, done fairly uh, quick. And just simply doing this um, helped them saving those 80%. Now let me detail exactly for each of these features how much they've been saving. So uh, frame capping is the first thing to do, um, I told you already. So and then I measured with one special system that I have um, that's actually I have cabled the output and input of the CPU in order to measure the exact power that it consumes. And same for the memory and the whole system. <coughs> and basically, simply by capping the frame rate to 30 FPS, um, you get up to, well, in that case, at the system power, just 25% battery life, to, simply by doing that. And um, they actually decided, for a couple of reasons, not to use um, the flip and uh, sequence to cap the frame rate, they decided to do that on the CPU side, which is an alternative which allows basically that it's not dependent on the driver they're using, it's not dependent on the system they're using, it's depending on their CPU side code and it's most um, accurate. The second one is uh, low quality shadows. So lower res shadow maps, simple filtering and disable AVSM. So for those who don't know what AVSM is, it stands for um, uh, adaptive volumetric shadow maps, sorry. And uh, I, I have a screenshot on the next image. And just from doing that, simplifying the shadows, they had so 8% on the um, SOC power and 4% battery life. And as you can see here, so that's before the saving, that's after. So as you can see, they simplified the shadow and you remove actually the smoke uh, shadow. But they were not happy. They wanted to do more. So basically, what they did is they simplified also the uh, lighting a bit further. So it's deferred, but simplified. Um, and in the shadows as well, only render only dynamic objects, because those are the shadows that actually move and that attract the visual, and also disable the, some of, of the ambient occlusion. And in that, for that case, again, they get an additional 10% battery life. And here, you can see that. Some of the shadow is staying, but some of the shadow are removed from um, this optimization. And the last um, saving, in order to really get to, um, to their goals, they decided to disable all of the post-processing effect. And you can see it um, here. For instance, what you can see the best is um, the depth of field. So this part of the sc screen is blurred. And when they remove it, it's actually um, rendered normally. And so overall, they still have a game that looks amazing. And those are battery random tests. So we basically played the game for like a couple hours and just until the battery runs down. And these are the benefits they were seeing. So it's up to double battery life on some of the systems um, they've been uh, optimizing for. And the game is still, I mean, there are some differences in visual quality. You can play the game afterwards, like the difference. Um, um, game, but basically it's still a like good-looking game with some power saving. So, to, summar to summarize, user cares about battery life, but they also want to be able to play their games at great visual quality, right? So, let them choose. Let them ask. All okay, right, do you want to go power saving, or do you want to have high-resolution graphics, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Do you want to play for four hours, or do you want to play for two with the best visual quality? Let the user choose. That's their own right. Um, power optimization is performance optimization. So you've all done power, uh, performance optimization. Well, just do a little bit more so that you get actually to save power. And the last point is that focused optimization, as you saw with the example of LEGO, can bring you terrific 
um, battery life savings, still uh, saving power.